Hi guys. Glad to be with you for the second of our lesson on famous artists. Last week we talked about Claude Monet, a French Impressionist painter. And today we are going to talk about somebody totally different. In fact, we're going to talk about somebody today who wasn't really a big fan of traditional art and didn't really like the idea of painting lovely or painting things that had deep and beautiful meaning. This was an artist who thought that we could find art everywhere, especially in things that were popular in culture. This artist's name was Andy Warhol. Let me show you a picture of what he looks like. This week's artist is American artist Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol started a kind of art called pop art because he believed that we could make art about things that were popular in our culture. He loved to paint movie stars like this one here of Marilyn Monroe and even popular foods. His painting of Coca-Cola cans and Campbell's soup cans are among some of his most famous paintings. Andy Warhol believed that anything could be art. And so today I thought it would be fun for us to create our own pop art of a favorite food that we like. And so for this project, you really get to make it your own. You get to make a painting like the Andy Warhol painting, but with a food that you love. I'm gonna show you how to draw a couple of different kinds of foods, and then you'll get to pick whatever you want for your painting. Then we're gonna talk about how he chose his colors and how to make those really vibrant, crazy grid paintings that he made. So all you'll need are a pa two, you actually need two pieces of paper. One of them can be a scrap paper, uh, pencil, Sharpie, and markers. So go gather your supplies and let's get creating. When we looked at Warhol's pieces, we noticed that he did them in panels. So sections, uh, each painting had maybe four, maybe six, maybe more sections. And in each panel, it was the same image. So a soup can, a soup can, a soup can, a soup can, or a Coke can in each one, or a face in each panel. But what differentiated the panels was the way they were colored. Different, very different bright colors in each panel. And so we're going to choose one food and we're going to draw that food the same way in four different panels. And then we're going to co color it in a different way. So the first thing I want you to do is just take one of your pieces of paper and fold it into fourths. The easiest way to do that, this is kind of a scratch paper, but it doesn't matter, is fold it, <coughs> excuse me, in half this way, and then fold it in half this way, and that will give you four equal sized panels. We're gonna take this piece of paper and set it apart, and then you're gonna get another piece of paper, even if it's your scrap paper, and do the same thing. So you'll have two pieces of paper with four panels. Then on this piece of paper, I'm gonna teach you how to draw a couple of foods. You're welcome to draw along with me or you're welcome to watch, and I'll tell you why. Because after I draw some of these foods, you have the option of choosing one of these or of choosing your own design, your own food. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So as I was practicing, I was thinking about four foods that I really like. I love strawberries, I love pizza, I love tacos, I also really like chocolate, though I must say I'm not a big fan of Twix, but they're fun to draw. And so I practiced by drawing these foods in these panels. So I'm gonna show you 
really quickly how to draw a strawberry, how to draw a piece of pizza, how to draw a taco. And I'm not gonna show you how to draw the Twix, but I'm gonna show you what I did in order to draw the Twix. And then after we've practiced drawing these a little bit, then you're gonna choose one food, whether it's one of these or something entirely different, and you're gonna draw one of those. So let's just play around a minute. On, we'll go back to our piece of scratch paper. And let's draw first a strawberry. When we draw our food, we want to make sure that it really fills a lot of our panel. So in this upper part of our paper, notice I'm using, do you recognize this? I'm using a pencil that we made in our very first month of drawing together. So to do a strawberry, you're really going to do a big heart with a not a very pointy bottom. And then the leaves are just long W's across the top. You can make a little U where the stem comes in. Draw the stem at the top and then some little ovals. Your ovals can actually be ovals or, or little U's for where the seeds are. Easy peasy. You might even choose to make one of your strawberry leaves pop off the top like that. I realize that I'm doing this in pencil, so it might need to be a little bit darker. So there's a strawberry. Let's talk about pizza. Pizza's super simple. Pizza is just a triangle with a wiggly rectangle for the crust. So let's say we wanted to do a slice of pizza. We'd make a great big triangle and then a wiggly rectangle for the crust. And then you can put any toppings you want on your pizza. On this one, I kind of put pepperoni and mushroom, but my favorite toppings on pizza is a funny combination. I like pineapple, bacon, jalapenos, and sometimes black olives or onions. I like a lot of flavor on my pizza. But for the sake of today, we'll pretend that I like pepperoni which I actually really don't. Notice when I do my pepperonis, sometimes I do them cut off where we cut the pizza. But you could put just about anything that you want on your pizza. Maybe you like little tiny black olives on your pizza. That kind of makes for an interesting drawing, doesn't it? All right, one more over here. So there, I've got a pepperoni and black olive pizza. Maybe I should just add a few pineapple because I really like pineapple on my pizza. Okay, now let's see what the third thing I drew was. Down here, I drew a taco. Tacos look complicated, but they're not. First thing we're going to do is this half moon. And so I'm gonna do a diagonal line with a hill for the front part of my taco shell. And then I'm gonna do some wiggly, squiggly lettuce. I don't know how you feel about lettuce, but I like a little bit of lettuce on my tacos. Then I'm gonna do some bumps for my meat. A little bit of ground beef in there. And then maybe how about some pieces of cheddar cheese? Some shredded cheese sticking out of the top of my taco. That looks like a crazy taco, doesn't it? And then let's make sure that we can see the taco shell on the other side. So I'm gonna start here at the bottom. I'm gonna do another little hill pretty close, and then it's gonna hide back there. And then we can just add some dots for some of the texture on our corn tortilla. I love a crunchy taco. And then this space, we're gonna leave blank because this is the space where you can draw a food that you love. Maybe you like hamburgers, or maybe you love bananas or apples, or maybe you really like Twix bars. If you want, you can pause the video and go get one of the foods that you like if you have something in your pantry or in your kitchen that you wanna draw. And what I did for this was I just looked 
at the food and I drew it larger than it actually was so that it fit nicely in my panel. So for this one, I started with the words and then I looked at the shape of the wrapper. Notice it's kind of wrinkly. And then I added these edges here. So you can draw any kind of food you want, just as long as it fills up your panel. Once you draw, once you pick your food, the next thing we're gonna do is trace that one food with a Sharpie. So let's see, let's go ahead and I wish, gosh, I wish I could be with you and you could raise your hand and we could vote for which one we're gonna do. I think I'm gonna do the pizza today. So with my Sharpie, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna trace, I'm gonna fix this a little bit because it's coming, it's kind of going off the edge here and I don't really want it to go off the edge. And I'm gonna add a little bit of wiggle to my cheese because sometimes cheese pizza gets a little bit wiggly. And I, can you guys hear my cat meowing in the background? My cat loves one of my daughters and when she can't be with my daughter, she makes her very sad. So I'm just tracing, just tracing the lines of my pizza and the toppings and I'm doing it in Sharpie and there's a reason for that. Even if we wanted to go back and put some texture on our pepperoni, we could do that. Whatever food you chose, you're gonna draw it first in pencil and then trace it in Sharpie, but you're only going to do it one time. So pause the video for a minute, draw whichever food you like the best, trace it in Sharpie, and then I'll show you the next step. All right, now that we have our one food chosen, we're gonna trace this food into the four panels of our good paper. Now you can't see on here very well, but because I traced, because I drew it in Sharpie, I can see through my paper enough to draw it again. I'm gonna do it with Sharpie. To draw it again right on here. So I'm able to see through. Now, if you're not able to see it, I'm going to show you another special trick that makes tracing, because I'm even Mrs. Burke is having kind of a hard time seeing. So this is one way, and I'm kind of doing it quickly so that I can see. So you can see that you can, if you look really closely, you can see everything underneath. I might even peek under. Yep, there's a pepperoni right there hiding out. And I think there's an olive over here. And I see a pineapple right here. Am I missing any? Yep, there's a pineapple right there. Now, that was a little bit challenging to be able to see through there. So we're going to take our art to another location, and I'm going to show you a cool trick. Okay, I'm gonna let you in on one of my little artist tricks. I have taken my drawings and I've taped it to a window. Now watch what happens when I put this piece over the top. I can see it perfectly. And so now, remember when I was tracing it on my desk? and I couldn't see exactly where my lines were. Now I can see exactly where they are and I can trace all of my pepperonis and my olives and my little pineapple chunks just exactly right. So what I'm going to do, I'll show you when I get this one all traced. Oops, I got to add my dots, don't I? Give my texture back. 
to my I can even put the dots in pretty much the same place. So this way, when you draw whatever your food is, you don't have to worry about drawing it exactly the same four times. You can draw it great one time, and look at that, you make a copy. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that again here and again here, and then we'll come together to color them. Now comes the fun part where we make them really look like Andy Warhol paintings. So what we want to do is make a little bit of a plan. We know that we want the four backgrounds to be four different colors. So I'm going to just make that plan right now. I'm going to put a red dot there because I want a red background there. I think I'm going to do a green background on this one. I think I'm going to do a hmm, purple background on this one and a yellow background on this one. So now that we have four different background colors, let's go ahead and color in our backgrounds. And remember, we have a fine point and a broad side to our markers, and they color much faster when we use the broad side. So I'm taking that broad side and I'm outlining my pizza with that broad side and I'm outlining the outside of my rectangle. And that way when I go to color it in, I don't have to scribble scrabble. I can quickly color it in just by using the broad side of my marker. So I'm going to color the background of each of my panels first. And I'm going to show you after we get those all colored in why we're going to do that. So go ahead and pick your background colors. Make your dots. Outline your food using the broad side of your marker. And remember, we don't really care if sometimes we go inside the lines or outside of the lines. That just doesn't matter and go ahead and color in your backgrounds.
already it's looking pretty exciting isn't it lots of bright bold colors now one of the things that we're going to do as we create this is to make sure that our colors are distributed that means that they are in different locations around our painting so what i want you to do is put your finger on your upper left hand rectangle or panel and say okay this one is red so that means on the one that is diagonal from it I'm gonna use a lot of red. So I'm gonna make my cheese. And remember, these are crazy. They're, they're not supposed to be realistic. I'm gonna make my cheese red on this one. So whatever your background color is on one panel, the diagonal will have that color in some very large section. So maybe if you did a taco, maybe your taco shell is going to be that same background color. Or maybe you did a strawberry or an apple, then you're going to do the big part of the berry in that color. Maybe you did a Twix bar or a Hershey bar or a Reese's or a box of Nerds or a bag of M&Ms. Whatever the biggest area is, on your drawing, you want to have it be the same color as the background of the diagonal. So I put that red one there, and that means that I'm going to have this pizza is going to be green. Does anybody like pesto on their pizza? One of my daughters loves pesto. It's made out of basil and she always has pesto. Whenever we make homemade pizzas at home, she puts pesto on her pizza and not red sauce. We like to make pizzas at home as a family because everybody has such different preferences. I like bacon and jalapenos and pineapples. Some people just like cheese. Some people like all the meat they can get. Some people like more veggies. Sometimes it's fun to make your own food. Do you and your family make food together? Pizzas are our favorite thing. So as I'm finishing up this crazy green cheese, what color will I make my pizza in this corner? Yep, it's gonna be yellow. Just like this background is yellow here, this is going to be really the only normal looking pizza of the bunch. I guess when we think about pizza, we might think that the cheese is a little bit yellowish. After we're done coloring that big part, the next thing we'll do is start coloring in the details. And the only thing we want to do is as we color in, we want to make sure we use a different color in each panel. So if I make my pepperoni purple in this one, I'm not gonna make them purple anywhere else. If I make my olives orange in this one, I'm not gonna make them orange anywhere else. We wanna try to get as many crazy colors in this painting as possible. So go ahead and oops, I should do right in the, I didn't do that over here, did I? The in right between the olives, I need to go back. You might have been yelling at, at, your, at your computer, Mrs. Burke. Fill in the cheese in the little black olive pieces. So I'm gonna keep working on mine and you keep working on yours and we will color together even when we're apart.
here's my finished piece. I sure wish I could see what yours looked like. What did you draw? What food is your favorite? I hope you had fun. And I hope you use that little sneaky tracing trick some more. It's a really fun way to learn how to draw. You can even tape up uh, magazine pages and trace them and make your own coloring pages. You can trace, well, don't take any pages out of books, but you can find all sorts of things to trace. You can print out really cool words with a neat font and then trace those in marker if you wanna do some lettering. There's lots of things you can do. Just make sure you ask an adult in your home before putting tape on the windows and make sure you take the tape off the windows when you're finished. I hope you had fun being a little bit of Andy Warhol today and I hope you find other things that are worthy of art just in your everyday life. Maybe out on the sidewalk, maybe at the grocery store, or maybe in your very own pantry. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry now. I want pizza. So I'm gonna go have some lunch, but I sure had fun with you as we got to draw together, even when we were apart.